are short stories, smaller scale novels. We do not have an absolute answer here. It is both yes and no. The answer is yes if we consider that they are also fictional narratives, even if they are shorter than novels. But the answer is no if we consider that the very fact that they are shortened entails that there are characteristics that they do not share with novels. Different yardsticks, for example, should therefore be involved. Here are some of the similarities with novels. In a wide and general sense, most short stories have settings, characters, events that form themselves into plots, and they deploy techniques of narration through which the stories are conveyed to readers. But quite naturally, the characteristics of the constituents noted are fairly different from those found in the novel. These differences are largely due to the short story's brevity. Its settings, for example, are often described concisely in a few words or are suggested or assumed by the given situation and not explicitly stated. The shortness, concision or brevity of the short story, whichever way you want to put it, is in fact a fundamental feature of its artistry and something that cannot be avoided, as reflected in the title of a collection of essays on the genre. And this is a feature that is at the forefront in our study of most aspects of the short story's narrative. In addition to the setting, you might also want to look at brevity in relation to character and characterization. In this regard, among the questions pertaining to character and characterization that you might want to ask are, does a short story truncate character? Yes, it does, but the character must be believable in spite of the brevity given to the character's depiction. What happens to the important characters if they have no room for development? A long phase of development for the main character might of course not be possible, but the character must still be convincing and plausible, in spite of the fact that several stages of the character's development that could be presented in a novel are not presented in the short story. Instead of several stages, there might on only be one stage whereby the character moves from one state of being to another or arrives at a realization that brings about changes to the character's perspective in some ways. As a result of the lack of or truncated development, will the characters become too sketchy and hence become less important as characters? To avoid sketchiness, the story should concentrate on just one character. It is usually okay for the other characters to be sketchy, even if he or she is an important ally of the protagonist or is the antagonist. Another set of questions concern the plot. Does a short story truncate its plot? Again, yes it does. Is the plot for a short story too brief and underdeveloped? This is a natural consequence of the nature of the genre. But this does not mean that plot should be abandoned. There is usually a plot, but it is often simple and singular, and lacks the amplifications recurrences or complexities of the plot of a longer narrative, such as that found in the novel. A long-drawn introduction to or preparation for the plot is also avoided. The plot usually goes quickly to what is central to it. There are of course exceptions to this, such as in Catherine Lim's short story The English Language Teacher's Secret, which has a rather long introductory segment. but. As this is a contravention of an unwritten rule for the short story, it does have a humorous effect on the reader. The length of the short story also ensures that its conflict situation is usually simple and limited in scope. It is typically not elaborate or complex, and often restricted to only one main conflict situation. One advantage that the short story has over the novel it's its greater facility to create tightly constructed plots. Tight plots are harder to construct if the narrative is lengthy. 
the reader's ability to perceive the plot of a narrative as tight might also be affected if the narrative is lengthy. As Edgar Allan Poe notes, if any literary work is too long to be read at one sitting, we must be content to dispense with the immensely important effect derivable from the unity of impression. We have mentioned narration in the short story earlier when we compared the two monodramas with the Taxi Man story. We are of course specifically referring to first-person narration here. We have noted that although third-person narration can be found in the novel, it cannot be found in drama. As many of you may already know, third-person narration does exist in the short story. But there is a distinction with third-person narration in the novel that we need to make before we go further. In order to do this, let us go back to an illustration in my lecture on narrative theory earlier in the semester. In my earlier discussion on narration, I noted that there are two types of third-person narration that we need to consider in relation to the two novels that we are going to do for this module. The third-person narration in Gopo Singh's If We Dream Too Long can be described as using the widely used term limited third-person narration. The narration in Su Chen Christian Lim's A Bit of Earth is more panoramic. In the short story, however, you'll find that much of the narration is like the limited third-person narration of Go's novel. The reason ties in with much of what we have discussed so far and should be pretty obvious to you. The short story lacks the length and magnitude that we find in a long novel and therefore panoramic narration is out of its reach. Going back to first person narration, you notice if you have read Lim's Taxi Man story that there is a significant point of difference between the narrations in the two monodramas and Lim's story. And this has to do with their addressees. The two monodramas' direct addressees are the audience. Both of them do not have character listeners within their story worlds, whereas there is a character listener in the Taxi Man story, in the person of the passenger, and the audience are thus not the story's direct addressees, but are indirectly addressed by the narrator. Instead of using the more general term, addressee, we should use the more specific term, the narratee here. The narratee is the person or personage that the narrator addresses his narrative to. It is the audience in the monodramas and the passenger in Catherine Lim's story. Going beyond the main aspects of narrative that we have discussed so far, we may also want to ask about a short story's theme or themes. Does the short story's brevity leave its themes, even the main ones, relatively underdeveloped. Whatever the disadvantages of relatively underdeveloped themes are, given the nature of the medium of the short story, the theme, what the story is about, could usually be couched in a simple statement that can be encapsulated in a single sentence, which is more difficult to do for some lengthy novels. Another facet of the short story that is affected by its length it's its language. Again, the tendency is towards using simple language and the avoidance of long, complex sentences. You are less likely to find complicated language used in a self-contained short story when compared to the novel. You are less likely, for example, to find the long, complicated sentences in Henry James's last novel in a short story. Another way of looking at the short story as a distinctive genre is to look at generic conversions. Can it, the short story, be converted into another genre? If this can be done, what happens? When you do this, the short story's identity and unique features will become more clearly focused and delineated, as you will arrive at an understanding of what you can and cannot do with it when compared to other genres. In this direction, we might want to ask questions such as, what can you do in a novel which you cannot do in a short story? Can a short story be novelized? Or let us look at other genres apart from the novel. Can the story be successfully converted into a theatrical work or movie? There have been instances of this. 
Catherine Lim's The Taxi Man Story, for example, has been turned into a stage performance. And in fact, looking at this question in reverse, we have noted earlier that the printed version of Kopal Kun's The Coffin is Too Big for the Hole does look more like a short story than a play.